I'm Jamelia. I'm Dominic West. My name is Philip Pullman. I'm a farmer from Scotland. I'm Josh Whittacombe. I'm Stephen Mangan. Natasha McElhone. Hi, my name's Nissan Sawney. I'm Tracy Ullman. My name is Natty. Mr. Lucas here. I work in the NHS. I'm Ollie Alexander. All right, everyone. Two years on, it's clear that there are very few positives. This is not what we voted for. Neither the government nor the people had very much information about the implications of Brexit. The final deal is not going to be what anyone voted for on either side. Democracy should protect us from politicians who make promises they never intended to keep. We are barreling towards either a bad deal or a no deal. Do you know what? This isn't for me. Even my friends and family who voted to leave didn't vote for no deal or a bad deal. Imported hormone beef and chlorinated chicken. That's not what we voted for. Europe for me is about peace. Working together to bring about change. We can travel freely around the 27 different countries of the European Union. That we want a conversation about what's going to happen for the future. The people were misled and lied to. Misled and lied to. sick of talking about Brexit. Something that should have been simple and straightforward has been bastardised and polluted by a combination of the progressive left on one side and the globalist elites in our government on the other. A marriage made in heaven. When I voted leave, my ballot paper was very clear about what I was voting for. Stay in the EU or leave the EU. Two options, two little boxes to put an X in. Of course, the EU is made up of many different organs. The Single Market, the Customs Union, European Court of Justice, etc. Leaving the EU would mean leaving all of these things. Obviously. I don't know why this is so difficult for some people to understand. And by some people, I'm of course talking about the fruitcakes behind the People's Vote campaign. Now, just a warning for you before I continue, I'm mainly going to be insulting these people in this video. I'm just that spent of patience over this issue. But I have gone into more detail on this subject and the people behind the people's vote in a previous video. Check it out up here if you like. Enjoy. But for the benefit of latecomers, let's do a little recap here, shall we? Over two years ago now, although it feels like yesterday, on the 23rd of June 2016, Britain voted to leave the European Union in a referendum. It was the biggest democratic vote in British history, by the way, with a 72% turnout and over 17 million people voting for the leave side, including little old me. Yet despite this, despite these history-making numbers, one side refused to accept it. One side threw their toys out the pram and demanded a do-over, because wow, 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 we didn't win and were upset. And hashtag xenophobia. Even though the Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, was very clear. This is a huge decision for our country. Perhaps the biggest we'll make in our lifetimes. And it will be the final decision. So to those who suggest that a decision in the referendum to leave would merely produce another stronger renegotiation and then a second referendum in which Britain could set, stay, I say, think again. The renegotiation is happening right now. And the referendum that follows will be a once-in-a-generation choice, an in-or-out referendum. When the British people speak, their voice will be respected, not ignored. If we vote to leave then we will leave. There'll not be another renegotiation and another referendum. These cretins insisted that actually, we can just vote again because democracy means whatever we want it to mean. Whatever suits our agenda on any given day. Two years on and it's like we're stuck in a time warp. Now you have the People's Vote marching through the streets with a huge march planned for the 20th of October, where hundreds of thousands of people will demand a second vote. Demand one. <laughs> this time on the terms of the Brexit deal we get from the EU at the end of the negotiating period. It's amazing, they said the British people weren't informed enough to make a simple yes or no decision back in 2016, but now suddenly we're all experts in economics and can definitely choose between six or seven different options. Oh, it's amazing how things change. But we'll get into that bullshit in a minute. First of all, I want to look at the new tactics the People's Vote have adopted in order to get their message across to the good British people. 
I'm Jamelia. I'm Dominic West. My name is Philip Paul. Ah, yes, they're using celebrities. That old chestnut. A foolproof plan, that is. Worked out really well for this lot during the Trump election, didn't it? And I'm sure it'll have similar success here. Just an observation, look how polished and professional the American campaign looks compared to this one. It's hilarious. Couldn't even be asked to get them all in one room together. Just let them film themselves on their phones instead. What dedication, eh? Such professionalism. But the default tactic of the left relying on famous people to spread political messaging says a lot about their mentality. They view the normal little people of this country, for lack of a better term, the working classes, the labourers, the struggling families, as nothing more than sheep to be herded. Now, I'm not saying people can't be sheep, of course they can. In a metaphorical sense, of course, we're not talking about the next step in the trans phenomenon. But in this situation, where 17 million people voted to leave in Britain's biggest ever vote, I'd like to assume that the majority of these people were energised and actually passionate about the cause. I'd like to think that they knew what they were doing, that they'd made up their minds on their own, and they were doing what they thought was best for them. But the Remain campaign, the people's vote, ugh, they view these people as drones glued to their TV screens. That's it. So hey, roll out a bunch of actors to tell them how wrong they were to vote the way they did. That ought to sort them out. It's so condescending. Why would a factory worker in Sunderland give a shit about what Patrick Stewart thinks? Oh no, Professor X is telling me that I was lied to and manipulated. I think I'll change my mind now. The reason the left uses celebrities is because they have a fundamental disconnect with normal people. They rely on successful public figures because they run in the same social circles. They're part of the same clique. They're all from a world so utterly divorced from reality. They can't identify their own lack of self-awareness. Membership of the EU affects real people in real ways. Ways that the celebrity-worshipping left don't have to deal with, and this is why they will fail. And they just want any excuse to mingle at parties with famous people. There is certainly that shallow element to this as well. Even my friends and family who voted to leave didn't vote for no deal or a bad deal. Do you even know anyone who voted leave, mate? No, I doubt it. But if we're using personal anecdotes, let me tell you that everyone I know who voted leave, and I mean everyone, which is a hell of a lot of people in my area, don't regret it at all. Not one little bit. And actually, most of them would be quite happy with a so-called no deal. Do you know why? Because they don't care about the stupid bollocks you and your celebrity chums talk about at dinner parties. They don't care about diversity or inclusivity. They care about not being able to compete for minimum wage jobs because immigration is out of control. It really is that simple. So stop with your lies, fat boy. Europe for me is about Peace. Working together to bring about change. We can travel freely around the 27 different countries of the European Union. First of all, Europe isn't the EU. The EU isn't Europe. One is a continent comprised of rich cultures and history. The other is a bureaucratic tumour that undermines those very things. This blurring of the lines, likening Europe with these gimps, is yet another tactic of the Remain side who try to make us feel guilt by suggesting we're all little Englanders who have an irrational hatred of European people. Rather than our quite justified objections to gobshites like Guy Verhofstadt and the influence of George Soros and his billions. But the EU is about peace, is it? Why do they want an army then, eh? It's about bringing about change. What kind of change? This type of change? This type of change? Forgive me, but change isn't a synonym for good, and these things are proof of that. Things that the people who voted leave understand, by the way. Understand and reject forcefully. The freedom to travel, well, guess what? You'll still be able to go on holiday after Brexit. You'll just have to wait in a line at the airport for a little longer. Can you handle that? Or is that too hard? Get a life. I want to spend the rest of my life dealing with the mess of Brexit that my generation didn't vote for. 
I love this argument. My generation weren't old enough to vote, so that means we need to stop it all. Well, my generation wasn't alive when this country entered the EU in the 70s, so I didn't get a choice about that or dealing with the subsequent mess it caused. I wish I had a time machine, I really do. Where does this end? Honestly, the, the sheer entitlement of these people is infuriating. And how will you suffer because of this? Really, I'm asking. Or are you just mad that you'll have to apply for a visa to go interrailing with your mates from now on? Crime your river. How many times do we say, well, with hindsight, I would have done things different? Gary, you could call a second vote tomorrow and I'd vote the same. You could have a third or a fourth and nothing would change. I wish you'd take your own advice and decided in hindsight to shut the fuck up. So on October the 20th, get out there. Let's push for a people's vote. People's vote. I back the people's vote. The people's vote. So big up everyone who's looking to go to the march. I'd like to have a second vote. A people's vote. The people's vote. I'm calling for a people's vote. Let's get a people's vote. I'm sorry I'm going to have to use this phrase, but it's time we took back control. 20th of October. March for the people's vote. We need a chance for the people's vote. The people's vote. We'll be there on the 20th of October. Please join me on the people's march. Please think about supporting the people's vote. Please join us on October the 20th. The people's vote. The people's vote. The people's vote. Will you join us? No, no, I won't join you. I think I'll spend my time doing something more worthwhile, like watching paint dry or decapitating myself. That'll be more fun. But good luck to all the famous people and their sycophants on October 20th. Have a nice day out. Take lots of selfies for your Instagram. And try not to get stabbed or shot by immigrants in London. Just a heads up for you. It's pretty bad down there now. I'll link this video down below for you, but you won't be surprised to see that comments have been disabled, as is tradition. But go and give it a nice downvote anyway, it is your duty. The biggest problem the Remain side have though is they don't have any compelling reasons why the UK should stop Brexit and remain in the European Union. All the reasons to leave are still there. Independence, regaining national sovereignty, being able to fix the immigration system. What do the Remainers have? Oh yeah, that's right. Economics. The most romantic of issues, I'm sure you'll agree. Really gets the blood flowing and the heart throbbing. Economics. Reading the official People's Vote website is a laugh and a half. Let's see how they rally the troops. We need a vote. New facts have come to light about the costs and complexity of Brexit that no one could have known at the time of the referendum. We know now that there will not be an extra £350 million a week for the NHS, that we will have to pay a £40 billion divorce bill, and since the referendum, Britain has gone from the fastest growing economy in the world to the slowest. The government has already admitted that in all possible Brexit outcomes, the country will be worse off. People didn't vote on these facts, and it's important that this decision is made with this new knowledge. So essentially, they're complaining about how complex it apparently is, and money. First of all, just because something's difficult doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I mean, what a childlike argument that is. And this shouldn't be difficult, by the way. The, the, the fact that the government is useless at negotiating Brexit doesn't take away from the fact that choosing to leave the EU was the correct decision. That's never going to change. But yes, they're obsessed with economics. Obsessed with it. Firstly, a reference to the big red bus that Remainers spend way too much time obsessing over. When the truth is, most people didn't give a shit about the bus and were planning on voting leave regardless. But the left have to believe that people are easily manipulated. Hence, they're willing to say the biggest vote in British history was all because of a slogan on the side of a coach. Makes sense. The £40 billion divorce bill. Y yes, I agree. That's a ridiculous fee. We shouldn't pay it. Simple as that. Refuse to pay. Tell the EU to shove it up their ass. What would they do then? Invade us? It's not a reason to stop Brexit. In fact, it's more of a reason to get as far away as possible from the EU because they've proven themselves to be money-grabbing expansionist ogres. Let's continue. Promises made by politicians about Brexit, like more money for our NHS, are not going to be kept. In fact, Brexit will leave our health service with less money and more staffing problems. You should always check the bill before signing. And the public have every right to demand a people's vote on the final Brexit deal. More about the NHS repeating themselves already. And I don't know about you guys, but hearing the same thing over and over again gets me really riled up. This is very inspirational so far. I'm making my placard as we speak. I just need more glitter. The EU has changed since we voted to leave. New rules on mobile phone means 
Don't you mean phones? Who wrote this? Jesus. New rules on mobile phones means we no longer face the same bills we once did when using our mobile phones abroad. The EU also agreed trade deals with both Japan and Canada and is about to start trade negotiations with both Australia and New Zealand. The Brexit that was promised is not the one that's going to be delivered. You should always check the bill before signing. And the public have every right to demand a people's vote on the final Brexit deal. Oh my word. The EU has changed, has it? No, it hasn't. Well, unless you mean it's gotten worse. Yes. Moving to impose sanctions on member states. Pushing for an army. The continuous, disastrous migrant crisis. The copyright directive to censor the internet. Oh yeah, nice work. Definitely sounds like something I want to be a part of. But no, the people's vote don't care about those things. They're just happy phone bills will be cheaper. Well, fuck me. Amazing. I've changed my mind now. You mean I can go to Amsterdam, smoke dope, and use my iPhone? Dreams do come true. They go on and on about trade deals. I mean, snorefest again. Listen, the economy is an important thing, but it's not the most important thing. And like I said, the factory worker in Sunderland is, I'm sure, ecstatic about the EU's new trade deal with Canada. He loves it, actually. It's all he can talk about in the pub with his mates. Never mind the football. He's talking about trade deals. You should always check the bill before signing. Yes, you've used that phrase in the previous paragraph. Will this be on the side of your bus? Will this be your famous slogan? It is important in the democratic process for the public to have the final say in the deal. Far from being anti-democratic, we believe a vote on the deal would be entirely in keeping with the democratic tradition of proper parliamentary and public scrutiny of the big decisions made by government. The 2016 referendum determined that Britain should negotiate the country's departure from the EU, and the People's Vote campaign respects that decision, do you? However, the terms on which we leave and Britain's future relationship with the EU were never formulated or put to the public in the referendum and much more information and hard fact about this exists now than was available then. As the detail of the deal becomes clear, what would be anti-democratic would be to give the public no further say in decisions that will dictate the country's future for decades to come. Well, finally, we have a word salad on what proper democracy is. They claim they respect the referendum result for Britain to leave the EU, yet they want to vote on the specifics of the exit. This basically means that they want the options to remain in the single market, the customs union, the European Court of Justice, so essentially staying in the EU. Oh, very clever, boys and girls. You've got us. You played it so subtly. And if they really do respect the decision to leave the EU, why is everyone on these marches flying the EU flag? I, I don't understand. Like, th this doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. But we all know what you want, really, don't we? Listen, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm sick and tired of this. Right now, I don't want to be eloquent. I don't want to be polite. All I want to do is to tell these annoying people to fuck off. So I will. Remainers, peoples, voters, celebrities, fuck off. Just fuck off. Your globalist shills, you don't care about this country in any real way. You view its citizens as nothing more than economic units, slaves to the GDP. Well, there's more to life than that. So fuck off. We're done with you, the EU, all the bullshit, but by all means, have your little march in a couple of weeks. I'm sure it'll be a good turnout. Pat each other on the back, suck each other off, hug a woman in a hijab, hey, you'll have a blast. The rest of us will be getting on with our lives, peacefully basking in the knowledge that your side is losing, and trust me, you will lose in the long run. You'll frustrate the process as much as you can, you'll make a lot of noise, you'll wheel out Patrick Stewart and Bob Geldof a few more times to tell us all how stupid we are, but you'll lose eventually. Goodbye and good luck. Oh yeah, and don't forget, I really want to say, fuck off. Do you know what? This isn't for me. Thank you all very much for watching once again. As you can tell, I'm just about done with this stuff. This Brexit thing is just, ugh, it's a headache. And these people are infuriating. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so in a couple of ways. The first way is via PayPal. The link is down below as always. Thank you to everybody who's been so generous. I, I really appreciate it. Or you can be a monthly patron of mine. $5 a month or more will get your name at the end of every single one of my videos as a credit like these gorgeous angelic beauties right here. You guys keep this channel going. 
I wouldn't be able to do this as often if it weren't for you. So thank you so much. All right, I'll see you later in the week. Adios.